Everyone here, Katie, is in watch and wait mode right now. Later tonight, a decision will be made on whether to move more than 60 ships from this spill site to get out of the way of the storm. Just when BP was on the verge of plugging its runaway well a mile under sea for good, nature pressed the pause button. Ships drilling relief wells are preparing to leave instead, and plans to plug the well from above will have to wait until the storm threat passes. This floating city would shut down. The one consolation, the well will remain unwatched with the valves closed and no new oil flowing into the Gulf. We have determined that if we have to evacuate the site, we are prepared to leave the well uh, capped. That's because the cap has been in place for a week with pressure rising and cameras on remotely operated vehicles unmanned submarines have spotted no major leaks or signs it's unstable. This is one of the ROVs used to watch and work on the well. This one is in for maintenance. It's connected to the ship. It's controlled in this room and feeds in images. These ships are the last to leave and the first to return to the spill site. Even so, the well could go unwatched for days. This is all BP control. BP executive Doug Suttle says engineers may have some data on the well, but not until after the storm is gone. We're trying to have um, some capability to do things like take uh, stored images, so photographs, video, other things that we can actually collect after the storm passes, but right now we couldn't do live monitoring. The main concern in evacuating the site is safety. Today, accusations that safety may not have always been the top priority at this well. From day one, he deemed this whole a well from hell. In Louisiana today, the widow of a rig worker testified about the day the Deepwater Horizon exploded. Her husband worked for Transocean, the company that owned the rig. We had many conversations about the um, pressure on the rig and the mud they were losing. I think he knew then he was going back to problems. A report obtained by the New York Times seems to back that up. In it, many workers expressed concern about the rig's safety. One worker described a culture of run it, break it, fix it. Another report obtained by the paper said 26 components on the rig were in bad or poor condition. Those reports were drawn up just weeks before the rig exploded. A Transocean spokesperson told the paper that most of the problems on the ship were minor and it ran for seven years straight without a problem.